It's your boy Chad Rob. We back, baby. Got a special guest in the building. Um, by the way, this is the hashtag I am who I am podcast, episode 30. Um, we uh she's a, a a weightlifter, and I love bodybuilding, weightlifting, anything to do with muscles and weights. And um I uh I heard a story, a, a co-worker of mine was at work. Tanya Harrell. She's always wanting to pick my brain about bodybuilding and meal prepping and lifting techniques and lifting styles. And uh, we got to talking one day and she was telling me about this, this female cop in Chattanooga that was breaking records in power lifting and telling me all these stories, you know, and how she's from Chattanooga, Tennessee and... She's just doing her thing. So I immediately got on Google and I typed in police officer in Chattanooga breaking records. And sure enough, my guest pops up. So, you know, me as as go getting as I've been, I get in I get in the DM and I say, hey, would love to have you on the podcast to tell your story. Um, So if you can introduce yourself to the to the public. Well, I, my name is Dijanae, and I am a um, police officer in Chattanooga. I don't power lift. I'm okay. not a power lifter. Okay. I compete strongman. Oh, Yes, I okay. compete strongman, and it's it's a huge difference, but yeah, that's who I am. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, strongman, tell me about it, because um, when I think strongman, I think of when they used to pick up the big balls. That's back it. In the, that, oh, that's so, okay, it. okay, okay. Yep. So, what got you into strongman lifting? Um, well, I ran track. Um, I ran track from middle school all the way up into college. Um, and then once I graduated college, I kind of needed something to do because I like to eat. (laughs) (laughs) I needed something to do that would, um, that would pretty much just keep me in shape. So, um, I ended up getting into strongman and I have a whole bunch of other reasons why I got into strongman, but, um, I end up getting into it, and now I pretty much love it. Nice, nice. So I was I was reading, you know, kind of doing my research a little bit, and they said, uh, I guess you got a show coming up in May? Yes. Okay, and you're going after your pro card? Not at this competition. This competition is just uh, another competition to pretty much get me ready for nationals. Nationals yeah, is when I will go after my pro card, which is in October. Oh, okay, okay. So nationals is so... Strong, I'm not real familiar with it. Is it by weight class or is it? It goes, um, it's a weight class. Uh, so for women, I know it's uh, lightweight, middleweight, heavyweight. I don't think there's a super heavyweight. I think it just goes up to heavyweight. I compete middleweight, so okay. it's 160 to 180. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So talk to me a lot about, so you said in high school you ran track. Yes. Um, where are you from? I am originally from uh, Oswego, Illinois. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, near Chicago or? It's about an hour from Chicago. I don't know north, south, east, yeah, west. I, hear that. So <laughs> I can't really, I can't tell you north, south, right, east, right. west, but it's about an hour from Chicago. Okay, yeah, that ain't too bad. That ain't too bad. So, did you go to college? I and did. run? Did you run in, tr- in college? I did. Okay, what yeah. uh, what college did you go to? I went to uh, Kentucky State University. Oh, that's what's up. So that's what kind of brought you down south? Yes. Okay, yes, okay. Track. That's what's up. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. So where'd you run in track? I was actually a, a heptathlete, which is a multi-athlete. Uh-huh. So um, I did, what was it? It's been so long. Yeah, I hear that. I did um, seven events. So I think it was the hurdles, the 200, 800 High jump, long jump, shot put, and javelin, plus um, the relays, the 4x1, 4x2, 4x4, and then the open (laughs) 400 and uh, open 200. Wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like I said, I was kind of doing my research a little bit, and uh, I heard that you, I guess, were in an abusive relationship, and that's kind of what got you into the whole weightlifting thing. Yes. Um, you care to talk about a little bit about that? And yeah, no, I don't mind. Um, so, um, yes, I was in a relationship where it um, where it became physical. So, um, 
my outlet, like the way that um, to build my confidence back up and everything uh, was to get into weightlifting gotcha, um, gotcha. because I didn't want to get into another relationship and the same thing end up happening and I can't defend myself. Gotcha. So um, to me, lifting weights was my way of becoming confident and being stronger that way if some guy was to put his hands on me or uh, pin me down to a bed, at least I can fight my way out I, of it. I can dig that. I can dig that. The reason why that story hit home with me is because um, when I started taking um, bodybuilding serious, um, I had lost my mother. And then um, like a year later, maybe two, I lost my grandfather. And then after that, I lost my grandmother, maybe a year after that. And, uh, you know, back in the day, you know, you used to drink and all that, yada, yada. Um, and then... When they all passed kind of back to back to back, um, I remember my cousin, because, you know, I, I lit up a black and mild, and I was like, you know, just smoking, trying to get through it or whatever, and he was like, that ain't going to fix nothing. That ain't, right. like, that, you're just killing yourself, right. basically. And I remember looking at him, and it, it seemed so so concerned, innocent, and so just like, uh, I don't know, it just, it just made sense at that time, so I, I ain't smoked one since, put it that way. And uh, so I, then I picked up the weights, and I'd always lifted and mm -hmm. been active, um, but from there, I kind of, you know, started taking it serious, watching what I ate, right. watching what I put in my body, right. you know, really trying to do it. And I put all my energy and focus into it. And it kind of got me through it, really, because, right. you know, when you're in the gym, all you're thinking about is getting that weight off. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I, I definitely can relate to that, um, which is cool. So I want to ask you a question. So, I, you know, I've been Facebook stalking you and uh you were talking about the dating scene, and I had a friend of mine ask me a question the other day, and I, I thought you would be the perfect person to ask this. Why do you think, uh, hold on, let me get it out, because I don't want to butcher the question. I don't want to butcher it. I wrote it down just so I didn't butcher it. All right, so this is what we have. Maybe, if I can get my notes out. <laughs> supposed to be prepared. I'm supposed to be a prepared host. Why do you think relationships don't last now in today's time? Um, I want to say um, because people don't communicate. And relationships, it's so, uh, I've noticed, and I'm going to speak on my relationships. Okay. I noticed that in my relationships, like, the communication was off. Okay. We weren't communicating like we were supposed to. And I know with me, I hold stuff in. I don't really open up. Yeah. So that was something that um, that messed my relationship my relationships up in the past because I wasn't communicating. He would be like, "What's wrong?" And I'd just be like, "Nothing," and brush it off. And he's like, "I can tell something's wrong, <laughs> right, but right. <laughs> you're not talking to me." So I think that's something that um, really just pushed it away. Okay, so to kind of piggyback off that same question, do you think social media has anything to do with it? Because, for example, when I was coming up, you know, whatever you're doing is kind of between you and whoever. Right. It didn't really get out right. unless I got to run in my mouth or a, a, another person got to run in their mouth. It right. kind of was between, you know, this. But now, you know, you can kind of tell a person is into something else just by the way their behaviors kind of are looking at their phone. So you think that has anything to do with it? I do because... Um People put too much information out on social media. Yeah, yeah, ain't that they true. don't know when to keep their home life private. So we know when um, they're getting into an argument. We know when they broke up or when stuff's not going right at home because they put it on social media. And then when they're in a good relationship, their pictures change. Like oh. everything changes on social media. But then when they break up or they have a break or what have you, then that's when... Their pictures right, right. end up changing again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I also read a post. So, this is where I go to the stalking. So, you said you was on a date with a coworker, and they want to talk about work. <laughs> so, I, I've dealt with this uh, with my with my wife now. We used to work at the same place, mm -hmm. right? And we get home, and she want to talk about work. And it used to drive me crazy. So, when I read that post, I was tripping because I was like, man, that's... <laughs> I feel I feel you. Mm -hmm. So is that is that really what it's like? Being a police officer, it's uh, I don't date police officers because I one I'm a police officer. Mm -hmm. And I'm at work more than I'm at home. Right, right. 
I don't want to sit here and get off of work and hear about how many traffic stops you had, <laughs> how many fights you didn't been in, how many arrests you had. I don't care. We do the exact <laughs> same thing. I don't care. Like, right, right. talk about it for, what, a good 10, 15 minutes, but the whole day, like, this guy talked about it the whole day, and I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't do it. So that's why... I don't date police officers. I can dig it. I can <laughs> dig it. I can dig it. So speaking of police, so what got you into being being a police officer? I actually didn't want to be a police officer at first. Okay, talk to me about that. Um, my last department that I worked for, I was a, a citation officer. So I just wrote parking tickets. Okay. And that was while I was in college, just trying to make some money. Right, right. But then a position came open. They were like, hey, you should apply. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. I'm not going to get it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, whatever. But I um, applied, and I ended up scoring in the top five. And oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now I'm a police officer. But now, switching departments, the reason I'm into it now and I'm staying into it is because I have mentored so many young girls and um, even women, too. Like, I have them reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram. Um, when I'm on calls, I end up... Um, I just get the sense like, hey, give them your number. Oh, so okay, I end okay. up giving them my number, and I can't tell you how many young girls have called me and was like, hey, because you talked to me about this uh, domestic, I'm no longer in it, I got out of it. Um, I had a young girl call me because she's about to run away. Uh -huh. And I was like, hey, you know, just sit there. I know it's hard, blah, 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 blah. And she ended up staying yeah. at the house, but then the next day, because um, I don't want to go into too much yeah, yeah, detail, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. but the next day she ended up uh, leaving that house because she's in, um, is it foster care? I think it was foster care. Yeah, yeah I don't know, but yeah. that sounds right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she ended up going to a better home, but she was going to run away and everything, but... Yeah, so that's why I'm really into it now. That's, that's, that's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. So so you deal with kids and stuff, so you're like a, a mentor. Mm -hmm, I try to be. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I try well, you're to You're doing be. a great job. You know, like I said, I've been I've been following you, and uh, it was curious. I Because I saw that picture of you. I'll put it on the screen. Where you in the cop uniform, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you kind of like, it kind of reminded me of Ronnie Coleman. You, you familiar with Ronnie Coleman yeah. at all? Like where you, you, your bicep was kind of hanging out. Oh, what picture yeah. was that? It's, I think it's on your Instagram. Yeah, I, I, I said, yeah, yeah, I had to look too because I'm about to show you. I'm gonna need the picture, but uh, but yeah, I just thought it was cool. So, so with young girls, if you could give some advice to somebody um, that may be in an abusive relationship, um, you know, that it just doesn't have the courage to leave and just wants to hang around till you know it's too late, um, what advice would you would you give them? You know, and I mean somebody, maybe not a young kid, but like somebody like an adult, like, you know, 30, 40. I always tell them on calls it's not worth it um, because I hear that, well, he's my baby daddy or, um, you know, he's paying my bills, he's doing this, he's doing that. I always tell them it's not worth it. Um, you can get help. You can talk to somebody. I know it's hard. It is really, really hard to get out of those situations. Right. But... Once you once once you find the courage to leave, mm -hmm. then that's that's when you know that you can just relax. But right, like, ugh, what am I trying to say? I encourage them to leave. Some of them they're not gonna leave right. because it's what they know. It's what they're used to. Um, but I always tell them that there's safe places to go. Mm -hmm. You have places to go, and. Whether they believe it or not, there's people out there that they can talk to. Okay. And even when I'm in uniform, I tell them that I tell them my situation what it, and what I've been through. And um, I just let them know, like, hey, I am here for you. I know that I'm a police officer, but act like I don't have this uniform on right now. Yeah, and you can talk to me. I was like, I will even give you my number. And that's when I just give them my number. Mm -hmm. And they end up calling me and they're like, I really want to get out. What do I do? And then mm -hmm. that's when I just start. Yeah. Giving them advice on what to do. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, being a police officer, being a, a black woman, I'm sure you deal with a lot of stereotypes and, you know, especially probably going into, you know, rural areas. Um, talk to me kind of about how you deal with that, because I know it's got to be frustrating to know that you, you know, you're no less black or no less whatever than anybody else. Because I, I'll just give an example. When I was a kid coming up, um, you know, 
but like it might have been music, but you know, it's a, a animosity towards police. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sure when you, maybe not you, because you swole, but, <laughs> um, but I'm sure you get that a lot though. Like, look, you know. So talk to me, kind of how you kind of deal with that, because I know it's got to be be rough on you. Actually, it's all about how you um, build the relationship in the community. Mm. It's all about how you talk to people. You get your respect about how you go about handling your calls, how you talk to them. Uh, There's a bunch of times where I've had people come up to me like, man, I hate the police. I hate the police. (laughs) And yet they sit here and they have a conversation with me. They open up to me. Like that same breath, they're like, man, I can't stand the police, F the police, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then the more that they stand that, the more that they just sit there and they keep talking to me. And then wow. they're like, okay, well, <laughs> you know, I, I, I view police officers different now. And I'm yeah. like, see, all of us aren't bad officers. Right, right. Um, some of us are actually out here to try to help the community. And I think that's what people are seeing, like, when I police, because uh, the area that I was in, it was predominantly black. Okay. So, and at first it was just like, man, I ain't finna talk to you. I'm not gonna yeah. talk to you, but I I know my area. Right, like, right. I rode around, I got out of my car, I talked to the kids, I talked to the parents and everything. And it's just like, oh, okay, hey, that, that's Miss White. Or, <laughs> oh, hey, uh, Auntie D. I, I got all type of names right, out there. Right, right, so right. it's all about how you, um, it's all about how, your your reputation in there. It's it's about respect. You respect them, it. they're gonna respect you. I can dig that too because as I've gotten older, it used to be I remember being sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, policeman pulls me over, policewoman pulls me over, I'm immediately hostile. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and not even necessarily hostile in a way where I'm cussing them out or nothing, but my mood time, you know, I'm, right. I'm you know and right. so that's automatically going to put both of us on the the head on a swivel. And uh, and then I remember times, you know, getting upset and talking at them like, hey, you know, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But as I've gotten older, I realized, you know, if I got pulled over, I'm probably speeding or I probably didn't use a signal, you know, or I probably did something to right. see, you know, uh, whatever. Um, so it's been pretty cool lately being an adult because now when I get pulled over, if I get pulled over, Hey, how you doing today, officer? Mm-hmm. Hey, what's going on? They tell me, oh, okay, here's everything you need. Boom, boom. Right. And we're gone. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's 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 cool. So, back to this strong, man. This, this is what I want to hear about. So, in this competition you're coming up, do you pick certain lifts? Or do y'all have like a, you know, like a, a they send you a list of stuff you're going to do? Mm-hmm. Or how does that work? They send us a list of um, each event with the weights or the reps or... Um, that we're supposed to do. I am not going to lie. I do not know off the top of my head the events for this next competition. Wow. So how do you, so, okay, so that brings me to my next question. So how do you train for it then? You do regular lifts. Um, and then I go to the Grit House. I work out at the Grit House, which is in uh, Cleveland, Tennessee. Okay. And they have some strongman equipment. Gotcha. So, um... I try to, I have to work around my work schedule, but I try to um, have a day where I just do straight strongman events, which is normally like a Saturday or Sunday. And my coach, I have a coach, and he programs my workouts for the week, and I'll just follow um, Um, the workouts for that day. Oh, so you do have a coach? Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So as far as diet, do you eat a certain way before a competition, or... Do you, you know, eat the same year round or? Um, I am on, um, sorry, coach. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> hey, we don't, we, we don't be telling over here. We don't tell it. <laughs> um, <But> approximately. <laughs> I have right now just been, it hasn't been bad. I haven't been just eating whatever. Yeah. But I have just been eating because I. I like sweets. Yeah, me I too. need yeah, sweets too. sometimes. And then, you know, with my job, it's stressful and you have to just grab and go pretty much. But um, when it's close to competition, I'm on that, a strict diet because I currently, my weight is, my weight goes from 185 to like 189. Oh, well, how tall are you? 
five six. Oh wow! Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's a lot of muscle. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to drop down to one eighty by mm-hmm. my competition. So I need to. I have to try to like stay on that diet, mm-hmm. but even still, my weight is still between the 185 and 189 mark. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So um, when it's close to competition, like two weeks out, that's when I'm like, I just, I'm straight water, I'm straight salads pretty much. I, um, a whole bunch of salt. Because it will, um, salt uh, carries a lot of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, I, when I like, if I do arms or a weak body part, mm-hmm. when I get home, I'll drink two cups of so not drink, but I put two spoons mm-hmm. of soy sauce and take them right after it because mm-hmm. it goes straight. Yeah, so, but it, it keeps you full. Yeah, for, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> well, I like soy sauce. I'm a salt guy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's what I do, and then um, I'll take um, this last competition. My coach had me take a uh, alcohol rubbing alcohol and Epsom salt bath. To pretty much dehydrate my body and sweat wow. everything out. It was rough. Wow. It was rough. And even when I got in my car, I still wasn't at comp weight driving to Kentucky wow. to weigh in. So wow. I was spitting in a spit bottle like, wow. oh, my God. <laughs> this is horrible. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so you, you dry out. You, you weigh in. Mm-hmm. Do you compete that day or the next day? No, we compete the next day. So you get the carb up? For yes. Sure. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. So how does that work? You eat whatever? Or yes. still clean? It's it's still clean. I Because I start my um, weight cut like two weeks early, mm-hmm. so I'm pretty much away from greasy foods and all that stuff. So you have to be careful about what you eat because you don't want it to just come on out. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Yeah. So you have to be careful. But once your body starts to get used to it, mm-hmm. um, then my coach uh, had me eating like he told me to eat all day so i ate all day <laughs> right right and he was like eat when you're full eat when you're full so i'm just eating and i was like oh my god this is horrible but when i competed i was like oh my god yeah. i got a bunch of energy <laughs> yeah, like yeah, this yeah. is awesome but that's what's up that's yeah. what's up so the video with you pulling the the was it a thousand pound truck <laughs> Uh, it was a, was it a Dodge? It was a Dodge Uh, Ram 3500. What? No. (laughs) So, (laughs) so I I don't even know how to really, what I'm trying to ask. So (laughs) if that's not pro, what are you going to be pulling in a pro show? Probably like a big semi truck or something oh my god so how many yards was that was that 100 yards it was, Mm-mm. It was uh 60 60 that's, that's 100 yards <laughs> that's, that's, almost, that's close yeah it's close enough <laughs> god almighty yeah i saw that and i was like golly and it looked like when you started off you was kind of like boom and then you hit like i don't know five six yards and wow wow, mm-hmm. wow 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 like a like a engine so talk to me about what's going through your mind when you're doing something like that quick feet Move your feet wow. to get this truck moving because, like, you're supposed to stay low. But I was already, like, my energy wasn't there anymore because um, we had tr- attempted to pull the truck the first time. Mm-hmm. But because it set overnight, the truck started to sink into the dirt. And it was already on the hill. So it was oh. it was pretty much impossible to pull that truck. Right, right. So they had to move it up. But once they moved it up, I was just like... D, I know you're tired, but you got to move this. Like, you have to move it or you're going to um, lose your first place spot. Right, I can't do that. So I was just like, okay, we got it going. We got it going. And then in my head, I was like, quick feet, quick feet, quick feet. And my feet just start moving so I can get that truck to go. God, it looked like that in the video, too, because I don't know what it was. It might have been 10 yards, but somewhere into it, you were just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Mm-hmm. I was like, Wow. Yeah, because like in my head at first, I was just like, okay, it's moving. And then someone was like, 
girl, you have to go. <laughs> so that's when my feet start moving, and I was like, okay. But my arms were so tired, so I was like, just move your feet, move your feet, D. Come on, you got this. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know I know people out there watching is going to want to know these, because I get this asked all the time. So how, how much you bench? I'm not <laughs> a bench presser. I don't, I don't bench. Um... I don't even think it's in my program. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. The last time I bench was a long time ago, probably sometime last year, and it was two twenty five. And oh wow! Wow. That was for one, and I of course had a spotter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So I'm yeah. not, I'm not a bench not a presser. Bencher. My upper body is my weakest. Okay. Area. Okay. Okay. So what do you deadlift? Ooh, deadlift. I'm at uh, four sixty five. I'm probably higher than that. Honestly, I haven't maxed out yet, but yeah, I'm trying yeah. to get to five hundred. Um, but I can wrap out four forty. So wow, wow. yeah, that's why I'm like, I think I'm higher than four sixty five. Wow. You max. use straps or you, you? No, I don't know wow, how to use straps. Wow. I don't, just put a bunch of chalk on my hands. Do and not like, do, do not use straps if you never <laughs> use them because it will become yeah. a crush. I used to lift with no straps my whole life, and then probably I don't know eight years ago, a buddy of mine had some. We were going heavy that day, and he was like, "Yeah, you should try them." I said, "Okay, cool, I'll try them." And now I, I drove home one time to grab my strap. So it's just no. ridiculous. So yeah, it don't. takes too much time, especially at a competition. Yeah, the only time I use them is on an axle deadlift. Okay, but other than that, no, it takes too much time when I could have got five reps in right, already. Right, right, so right. I don't use them. Right. What's an axle deadlift? An axle deadlift is a, like the tire. Axel, it's a really thick mm, bar. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, it's okay. A yeah, thick bar. yeah. I, I think I've used those for for some for a couple of things. So how much you squat? Mm-hmm. Um, right now I'm at three fifteen. Wow. So wow. I'm trying to get that number higher. I've, I'm trying, but yeah, I'm at three fifteen right that's now. That's what's up. No, that's that's respect. Yeah, that's respect. Respect. And then let's see what else would they have. Uh, push press like a, a shoulder press. You mm-hmm. shoulder press it all? See, my upper body is my weakest. I know. That's what um, I'm asking. <laughs> Uh, let's see. If I'm going from the ground, um, like with an axle, because that's the only ones I really do for real. Right. Um, I finally reached uh, 200 on that. Okay. So okay. I was happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. Because I have not hit 200. So 200 is heavy though. Yeah. I mean that's heavy on any lift, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it that's, is. that's heavy. So yeah. I was super excited about that. That's what's up. That's what's up. So have you done the one with the ball? Yeah, that's one of my favorites. That's one of your events. favorites? So yes. talk to me about that. So what's the heaviest one you've... Uh, what was the heaviest one? Was it... Uh, I don't know if it was 240 or 260. I know that there was a competition where it was... I don't know if it was 240 or 260. I honestly don't remember, but... I mean, you uh, put tacky, which is this really sticky stuff. Oh, okay. You put tacky on, and you lift it, and yeah, you... <laughs> so you so you wrap around it and then mm-hmm. and you, you lap it like the the oh, heavier it like is, kind like a power clean almost. Kind, yeah, it's because you you're almost deadlifting it off the ground. Okay. So you're you wrap around the stone. You make sure your hands are centered. You get it up and you lap it. You get it in your lap. Make sure it's there, and then you pretty much you're using your butt, your hips, your legs to get it up over that bar. Wow! Wow! That's mm-hmm. what's up. That's what's up. So. I know you said you were looking to get your pro card. Um, do you you plan on doing any modeling or anything? No. <laughs> no. The reason why I was asking because you you took a few like I was, like I said I've been social media stalking you. You got some really good pics. So I was just curious if that was in your future at all. <laughs> no. Okay. Unless the sports magazines like, hey, I want you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but other than that, no. Okay. 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 <laughs> cool. Cool. So, talk to me about the pro card. So, how does it work with? Uh, because I know in bodybuilding, you know, that basically makes you eligible to get paid. Mm-hmm. Um, so is that what you plan on doing, like doing shows for, for pay after that or yeah. getting a sponsor? Or? Yeah, sponsors, uh, pay. Um, then you that's when you get to go to like the really big shows, like the uh, super big shows. like The ones that are like on TV and stuff? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, Nationals and Arnold's and everything like that, that that's normally televised but it's not 
televised like how oh yeah i mean like espn the, yeah yeah, the, yeah i know yes. what you mean yeah 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 i know what you mean that's that's where i'm trying to get to the espn and yeah. everybody's like oh yeah, i know yeah. her yeah i'm I like yeah, yeah episode 30 yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's how I'm trying to. That's how I'm trying to be. That's what's up. Then I can dig it. I can dig it, cause it's. Uh, I don't know. It's. I just find something in someone that's in the gym, cause you know I'm a gym addict anyway. So to to see somebody chasing a goal, like to have an end goal with it, mm-hmm. and then to use it for you know bettering their self as far as mentally and you know physically and all the above, it's just it's just so appealing to me. So it's it's dope that you that you're doing that. Really, yeah. really. So. Um, everybody that come on the podcast, I've got to know it. I've got to know it. Five greatest rappers of all time. Your opinion. Oh, your your five greatest. Now, I don't care about popularity. What you got in your headphones when you warming up for them shows? I want to hear about that. I want to hear what gets you through. A lot of times, um, I have some gospel music playing. Hey, that's fine. That's fine. So that's I, fine. That's I fine. I honestly can't answer the rapper one. You can't answer the rapper one? <laughs> okay, okay. So we'll, we'll change it up then. R&B. Oh, um, I like the 90s. That's fine. R&B. That's fine. Like, I like, that's fine. you know, like... Uh, Silk, uh, Boys to Men, like I like stuff like that, yeah. like stuff that I can just vibe to. Yeah, I like... so give me your top five. Oh, Lord. Top five R&B. Um, let's see, who is on my playlist? I like, um, I like Silk, Okay. Um, Boys to Men, I love Escape. Oh, yeah. Love them. Yeah, I, I like I Love Escape, love too. Them. Yeah. Um, uh, who was it? Cutting Close. Is that the name of that group? I can't think. Cutting Close. What song is it? Um, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I was just listening to it on the way. Here. Well, I know uh, my, my buddy went to a concert the other day, uh, Next, that Butter Love. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were jamming it the other day, reminiscing. Yeah. I listened to stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Like... I can dig it. I can dig it. I can dig it. So if you had to pick a favorite R&B of all time, your go-to. Escape. Escape. That's mm-hmm. what I can dig. I can dig. I can yeah, dig. so I can just sing as loud as I want to. We sound a hot mess, my poor neighbors. <laughs> I, I just be in my house just singing like, yes, this is my song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you say you listen to a lot of gospel. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was reading in the article, you're, you know, you're a uh, Christian. And you, uh, you know, you do a lot of things for, you know, to be Christ-like or whatever. So talk to me kind of about that, you know, like dealing with... Uh, uh, opposition and still keeping the faith and you know how that how that works I mean because I know it's got to be tough when you dealing with a uh, an abusive relationship mm-hmm. to still be you know on the path because you're dealing with so much because I know when I was going through all my stuff I it's hard to really you lose your faith you lose your faith so mm-hmm. talk to me how you how you stay so strong there's times where I'm honestly I'm not. Okay, okay. Um there's been times where like I literally just was like God, why am I going through this? Like and it got to the point where I was like I can't even pray. Like I cannot pray, but it's so weird because even when I can't pray, it like somebody will send me a random text message and um, be like, God loves you, or send me something positive, and I'm just like, okay, that had to be God, because right. one, I haven't talked to this person in a long time. Right, right. So I was like, how how do they know that I'm going through what I'm going through? Because um, I've gotten to the point where I don't put a whole lot on social media either. Gotcha, gotcha. So I'm like, how do they know? But um, it gets to the point where you're, I'm, I have no choice but to pray. Gotcha, so gotcha. even if it's just me laying there um, on the ground just crying, like I know that God hears me. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually, like, I'm back to normal. Like, okay, I'm good. I can do this now. And I get up and I go. And right. I go about my day and get to the gym because the gym is my happy place. Yeah, I hear that. And then that's when I'm just like, okay, now I'm back to normal. I can relax. Thank you, God. And I just you keep moving. continue on. If you could go back and tell your, I don't know. 20 year old self give give your 20 year old self some advice what would it be um i would pretty much uh let's see what would i tell me i pretty much 
Hmm. Good question. <laughs> Stompers, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, I think I would pretty much tell myself to let go of fear mm. and don't allow fear to get in the way of completing my goals and dreams. Wow, you said something there because I, for the longest, uh, I, I did a physique contest in 2010, no, 2012, and I got third, and um, I was so mad, like I was angry, because I, I had never did something so, what I thought was, the, I did the best I could getting mm -hmm. ready for the show, I was I came in as good as I could, possibly of that at that time, and I got third, and uh, the guy that won, I think, knew the owner of the show, so I felt like I should have gotten second, there was a guy better than me there, but I, I shouldn't have been third, right. in my mind. So, you know, I was like, forget it. I'm going to train, I'm going to train, I'm going to train. So I, I literally would train. So I would bulk up, cut down. Mm -hmm. I ain't ready. Another year, bulk up, cut oh, down. Oh, yeah. I ain't ready. Bulk up, cut down. 2019, I finally said, you know what, forget this. I got to know where I'm at. Right. I'm sick of every day talking about, yeah, I could have been, or I right. would have been the best, or, right. man, I'm better than all of them on the yeah. internet. I'm, be I'm the best ever, right? Yeah. So I was like, let me see. Let me really put my chips in, see where I'm at. So... I do the Dexter Jackson Classic, and, and it was in Chattanooga. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I get up there, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to come in, I'm going to blow them away, right? So I get up there, and, uh, you know, there's some beasts. I mean, I might have been 203 on stage when I weighed in, and, of course, that puts me in heavyweight. If I would have known, I would have dropped to 199, I would have been a light heavy, but I didn't know at the time. Um, but uh, anyway, so I'm standing beside dudes that are 240, Two, oh, 235, wow. <laughs> 250, shredded to the mm -hmm. bone, you know. And uh, But I got my answer, though. Right. I, was like, I know where I stand. Right. You know, I didn't get last. I didn't get first. But, you know, I, I did it. I finished it. Right. And so I said all that to say. So then I was like, well, so what else if I put my mind to it? What else mm -hmm. could I do? So now you're here. We're doing this podcast. So got to let gotta let that fear go. Yeah. You got to. Yeah. Because if you, if you be scared and keep, you know, acting like you're going to jump in the pool. You're not going to accomplish anything. Your nothing, goals, nothing. Yeah. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Wow. Wow, that's deep. That's deep. So, I, you know, I don't, you know, I don't want to keep you all night because I know, you know, you got a little drive ahead of you. So, um, this this competition coming up in May, what what are your expectations? What, what are your goals? What do you, what would be a success for you? A success would be to come in first place because I have not, at this competition, I have not um, came in first place at this competition. Okay. Um, another goal of mine, because like I said, my overhead presses just suck. <laughs> <laughs> so I want, because I think the log press, I think it's, I think it's 150, mm -hmm. 150 or 160. I cannot remember, but I know that I want I want to at least get six reps on that. If I get okay. that, then, like, I'm set. Like, I'm just be so happy. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. like I said, I, I'm not good with overhead presses. Right, They're right, getting right. better. Yeah. But that's a goal of mine where I can just be like, oh, my gosh, I did it. So I know that I can yeah. do right, anything right, now. Right, right, right. So, so I guess when I'm – so is it based on reps? So the sh some how them. they score it? Yes, yeah, some of them. Um, our overhead press, which is normally our first um, event, mm -hmm. it's how many reps you can get in 60 seconds. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay, okay. So my goal is six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot, that's awesome. That's awesome. So is this a qualifier or are you already qualified? I already for qualified. National? I qualified. Um, when was my last competition? When did I come? Whenever my last competition was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this year. <laughs> I already qualified. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you just, like you said, you just probably, you know, getting some. Getting some more events through, under my yeah. belt. That way when nationals get here, I'm just like, you I'm ready to go. You ready to go, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's what's up, that's what's up. Well, so tell them where they can find you at. Um, You guys can find me on um, my Facebook, my first name, Dijanae, and then my last name, White. And then my Instagram is D underscore the word double and the letter U. And then um, apparently you can type me into Google too. Yeah, you can type her into <laughs> so Google. Yeah, she'll pop right on up. You can type me into Google. Yeah, she'll pop right on up. She'll pop right on A whole bunch of stuff will pop up. You'll get my name, and then you guys will be able to find me there. And I also have a fitness page, uh, which is Janae Fitness. That you oh, guys can that's what's me. up. That's what's up. So, last thing on the fitness. Um, do you do any coaching? 
Um, I don't yet. Okay. Um, I've had people ask me to coach them. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had people ask me to coach them in bodybuilding, and that's not. I don't compete bodybuilding, so I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, you you seem like you, you you got a lot of muscle, so it seems like you could figure it out. Yeah. I mean, I'll be able to figure it out, and this is where I go back to the whole thing with the fear because mm-hmm. I have been wanting to coach and I have so many people ask me and mm-hmm. I, um but it's just like what's stopping me yeah like, what is stopping you and that's what <laughs> I I'm like huh like I'm like okay I'm gonna do it and then I'm like no because what if nobody um what if I don't get anybody or, and I just think of a whole bunch of crazy stuff right. and it stops me so yeah yeah, nah, don't let it, don't let, nah, 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 don't let that stop you, because um, the thing I'm learning with fear is you, okay, we talk, we talk fitness clients, so you have 10 people want to be, you're like, oh, I can coach all 10, mm-hmm. so in our mind, we're like, I got to get all 10 of them, got to break it down to one thing, Right. so let me get this person, hey man, let me, let me hop on you, let's, let's work on it, Right. then I can kind of work through it right. and then we get right working towards the 10 yeah. you know what i mean so it's yeah you can what i'm learning with life is the big picture is overwhelming mm-hmm. but we want to get there today yeah and that's <laughs> that's, that's been my problem yeah. that's why i'm like no nah, let me stop <laughs> but then like one day i was just like you know one is way more than what you have right now <laughs> so like <laughs> <that> the truth? <laughs> just do it d like just do it so um, once I have some downtime next week, I'm actually going to um, put together like this program. Because like I said, I have a fitness page and I've had so many girls right. and women like, oh, how do you get this? And yeah. how do you do that? So I'm actually going to put something together. Nice, nice. And then um, let people know, hey, I have this program together. Let me know if you want to try it out, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, yeah. Be sure to shoot that link to me because, yeah. um, you know, the the internet don't do any justice, by the way. In person, it's it's way more impressive so um so it would be it would be really cool to be able to you know be like hey check her out you know she got this thing going because I, I get a lot of females that's asking me and i'm like i don't know a lot mm-hmm. about but I, you know i've been trying to help my cousin a little bit and uh you know the eating is different for right. men and oh, women and the is. cardio is different it is. like me i can walk an hour on the incline and then, y'all and then yeah i'm 20 pounds i'm show <laughs> yeah. ready almost you know yeah. um so it's so it's crazy so i'm trying to learn with my cousin how her body works and you know how went and you know a woman's body works so right. it'd be cool to have you as a kind of like hey check out d call d she she can she can hook it up so um so if you could leave them with something um somebody want a, a female wanting to get in the strong man mm-hmm um, because I didn't even honestly know women did strong men. Mm-hmm. Had no idea. Learn yep. something new every day, right? Yep. <laughs> um, so if you could give some advice, leave them with some advice on starting, getting in the strong man, what would you tell them? I would tell them just to do it. You're going to get negative feedback. You're going to get positive feedback. I have gotten, don't live too much. You're going to look like a man. I still get that um, I look like a man. What? You're going to get a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> okay. Just get out there and do it. If this is something that you want to do, do it. Don't allow what this person on the internet said. Don't allow what your family uh, tell you. This is what you want to do. Then mm-hmm. you do it. And that it's not even strong, man. Like, this is work. This is powerlifting. Whatever it is that you want to do, don't allow anybody to stop you from accomplishing your dreams. Right, right. And another, uh, one thing to say in what you said, you're going to look like a man. It is extremely hard to put on muscle. It is extremely mm-hmm. hard. Just because you're going to gym mm-hmm. and lift weights for a month, <laughs> you know, you're not going to be swole. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen. Yep. I done tried it. It ain't going to happen. I tell them that all the time. And I'm like, and that's why I post so much. I post a lot. Like, I'm sure you're, you're probably like, oh, I wish oh, you no, stopped. No. I'll be like, Mark, <laughs> promo. <laughs> I post so much, and I do it for a reason because, like I said, you get people, oh, you live too heavy, you're going to look like a man. I'm out here pulling trucks. <laughs> you're pulling trucks, she is. <laughs> and, I, and I still have my girly shape. I still have uh, my butt, my thighs. I still have all of that. Mm-hmm. You're not going to look like a man. You're no. really not. That's if you start taking the steroids yeah, and all that nah, other that, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not gonna look like a man. Just do, do what you <laughs> want to do. Yeah, just do what you want to do. Yeah, just do it. Was, 
<laughs> nah, like I said, I ain't trying to hold you, but it just kills me because you want this big, these big body parts. But, but you, you don't want to do the work. But you don't want to do the work. <laughs> you don't want to do the work. You think he's going to look like a man. Yep. You know what I mean? So like, yep. if, I, if I want big arms, guess what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to eat a lot and I'm going to have to train yes. a lot. And I'm going to have to do it over and over again. all the time. Like, girl, I want my butt big, but I don't want to sit here and uh, lift heavy weights and blah, blah, blah. Well, girl, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, like, I mean, it's just, it's just this whole microwave society is crazy mm-hmm. and, I, and I caught myself running into that like like I said that big picture is so beautiful it's like ooh mm-hmm. I want I see it all I want all that but then well now you get back to reality also oh, I'm at the start line how do I mm-hmm. how do I even get there yep. so, so that's really cool I really appreciate you coming through um, it means it means a lot to me um, because I really wanted to pick your brain and maybe you could inspire someone out there to just go for it I mean because that's the whole uh, reason I started this podcast is because a lot of times as we get older, we quit chasing any type of dreams. We kind of get in them a, a, just a routine. Get right. up, go to work, right. get the kids or whatever it is you do, go to sleep, right. get up, you know, and then you just wind up, you look up and you're 60 years old and haven't done any of the things that you dreamed about right. or, or even thought about or wanted to do. So um, to, to meet a person like you that's actually doing it and doing it well um, it's it's just it's just an honor, and I really appreciate you coming through. It's no it problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, yeah, on that note, um, this is the hashtag I am who I am podcast episode thirty. Um, be sure to check us out everywhere: uh, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast. Check us out. Um, please leave five stars or thumbs up wherever. If you do not like the video, that is okay. There's a comment section. You can you can talk as bad and nasty to me as you like, but leave the thumbs up and five stars and the comment. I'll get to it. I'll try to fix whatever your problem is with the show. And uh, on that note, as always, I'll be back. Yeah.